apple. <laughs> no, not the fruit, but the world's most renowned and sought after technology giant. Well, how many of you have an apple? A lot of you, right? Maybe at home, maybe in your pocket. Well, the answer is pretty clear and simple. It's one of the best and always will be. And the mind behind this? Steve Jobs. Well, this short film will tell you how, when and where this started. What is the vision behind this project? This is where you find out. Anderson, a speech therapist, and Abdul Fattah Jandali, a political science professor, Steve Jobs, an unnamed infant given for adoption, was raised by Clara and Paul Jobs, and was renamed Steve Paul Jobs later. While Jobs was always an intelligent and innovative thinker, his youth was riddled with frustrations over formal schooling. Jobs was a prankster in elementary school and his fourth grade teacher needed to bribe him to study. Jobs tested so well, however, that administra administrators wanted to skip him ahead to high school, a proposal that his parents declined. Steve Jobs dropped out of Reed College after the first six months, but then stayed around as a drop-in for another 18 months or so before he really quit. So why did he drop out? Well, he chose a college that was extremely expensive and all of his working class parents' savings were being spent on college tuition. After six months, he couldn't find the sense in it. He had no idea what he wanted to do with his life and no idea how college was going to help him figure it out. Mac was the first computer with beautiful topography. If he had ever dropped in on that single course in college, the Mac would have never been multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. Waz and Steve started Apple in his parents' garage when he was 20. They work hard and in the next 10 years, Apple had grown from just the two of them in a garage into a $2 billion company with over 4,000 employees. At the time of 30, Steve got fired. Why? As Apple grew, they hired someone whose visions of the future began to diverge and eventually they had to turn out. You've got to find what you love. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way you'll be truly satisfied is what you believe great work. And the way only do great work is to love what you do. So keep looking until you find it. Don't settle. If you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on him and since then he has looked in the mirror every morning and asked himself, if, the, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm doing about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, he knows he needed to change something. Your time is limited, so don't waste it. Living someone else's life, don't let the noise of others' opinion draw down you and your inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary.